Someone once called the pursuit of nostalgia the sweet poison. While it can certainly be that, I am of the opinion that nostalgia is a double-edged sword. I grant that trying to recreate the past can be a noble effort, but oftentimes that effort results in works that have lost their own identity in the process. In the worst of cases, they retread both the strengths and weaknesses of the predecessor because it treats the work it's adapting as if it's a state of normal that was desecrated by various villainous sorts. The modern straw man applies often here. It is this sort of attitude that lies at the heart of my issues with quote-unquote old-school play. Now, I will admit, I've spent the better part of three years with a none-too-shy opinion of the old-school renaissance and all of my problems with it. But I want to make clear that I do not have a problem with emulating old-school play in and of itself. I only take issue with the fact that it's assumed to follow that old-school play has to use rule sets and ideas from the past as if they were a state of perfect normalcy without questioning if they even worked for or what they were trying to do. Ironically, earlier versions of D&D did not take the rules as being sacred. Because of this, and other reasons, there are very few old-school games that I can actively recommend, but Heroes Against Darkness is one of them. Heroes Against Darkness, hereafter referred to as HAD, is a free RPG by Justin Halliday which runs at 231 pages in a two-column format. The game purports to mix elements of advanced, second, third, and fourth edition Dungeons and Dragons with basic D&D at its core. Owing to its old-school roots, the book uses mostly black-and-white artwork in its contents, with a large color landscape image on the cover. Structurally, HAD is split into four major sections. The Player's Guide, the Game Master's Guide, Beasts and Bastards, the game's equivalent of a monster manual, and Appendices and stuff. The book is generally well presented, with clearly defined rules and ideas therein, but there are a few nagging issues of note. I think the game may have been better served by dividing it into XY series of chapters for the sake of organization, but the game's minimalist design keeps things from being too haphazard. Furthermore, I feel that the rule set intentionally expands some mechanics into multiple chapters for the sake of length. There are a handful of See Later Page X moments in the first section, such as powers being separate from class descriptions, which I think could have been streamlined. This also applies to the rule boxes that are found mostly in the player's guide, which often repeat what is stated in the chapter. While I understand the intent, I think the rule boxes would have better served as a summary type section near the back end of the book. These, however, are minor gripes that easily fade during actual play, especially since most of the presentation issues are confined to the player's guide. HAD is a game that prioritizes simplicity in the path of fewest rules. This also means that there is less in the way of exception-based gameplay here than in other D20-based games. As with its contemporaries, the core mechanic is a roll of a D20 plus and minus modifiers, as appropriate, versus a target number. A roll of a natural 20 is an automatic success, and a roll of a natural 1 is an automatic failure. Character creation is heavily streamlined and will take around 5 minutes at most to complete. Players choose a race, class, and generate ability scores by either assignment or random rolls. Everything else, namely ability bonuses, health points, anima points, initiative bonus, movement speed, attacks, defenses, and powers, is calculated from those elements. After that comes purchasing of equipment, and a character is essentially finished. Feats and skills are non-existent in the game, with attributes and half-level bonuses filling in their roles. Each of the classes can be summed up in half a sentence. To use the fighter analog, warriors are skilled melee combatants, while barbarians are durable melee combatants. Similarly, races provide a language and two ability bonuses, with a broad disposition that seems to be the closest thing to an alignment chart in the game, but is not used mechanically. That said, I am not fond of the other classes segment that teases a few hybrid class ideas, but does not go further into them. I have an issue with this because there's little in the way of advice on how to make a hybrid class, or a general class for that matter, that would be balanced with the others. Outside of that, many of the calculations for the remaining stats are based on the following formula. Relevant ability modifier, plus one half of the character's level rounded down, plus equipment, plus and or minus miscellaneous modifiers as appropriate. This formula primarily applies to attacks, initiative, and total ability bonuses, with the only real exceptions to this rule being movement, which adds 5, the four defenses, which add 10, and health, which starts at constitution score plus the class bonus at first level and constitution modifier plus the class bonus at second level and onward. 
Health is measured in health points, while spell casting is measured in anima points, the game's version of a spell point mechanic. The three primary attacks are melee, ranged, and magic, treating magic as an attack spell. The four defenses are armor, evasion, magic, and resilience, essentially a find and replace of armor class and the three f- saving throws from D&D. Weapons and armor follow a three-tier formula in terms of their proficiency, i.e. the equipment that a character at any given time can use, determined by their class. For weapons, it is simple, normal, and martial, while for armor it is divided into light, medium, and heavy. Additionally, a price slash bonus chart is displayed for the levels of quality that equipment can have, and there is a large gap in price between the lowest, shoddy, and the highest, named. HAD uses a silver-based economy, and appears to imply that the adventurers won't have a large amount of it at any given time though aside from cost, it doesn't go into what that comes across in-game. While prices are given for various types of items, weapons have their creation time as well. Owing to the simplicity-based battle cry of the game, encumbrance is is simplified into a list of total items aside from the held and worn items, i.e. weapons and armor, rather than a weight total. While I am unsure why powers had to be separated into its own section, The powers for each class is well established on what each can do. Mage classes technically have more powers than the others, but the lack of an anima requirement seems to act as a counterbalance for martial classes. Couple this with the variable cost many of the attack spells have, which can make it easy at high levels to burn through anima, and I think there's a strong balance between magic and non-magic characters. Increasing the effectiveness of Rally, HAD's version of 4th edition's second win to 50% recovery instead of 25%, also provides an effective safety net, as well as it being able to recover anima and hit points. Concerning the Game Masters section, the game advises to say yes more often than no when players want to attempt things. I mostly agree, but I think letting the players know the risks rewards is equally paramount. Overall, the GM section is nothing new from these sorts of advice columns, but can be fairly helpful to a newbie GM. A few magic items are provided, and I wish the game had a magic item creation system, but that might involve more charts, which seems to be this game's nemesis. Additionally, a few house rule ideas are presented here for those who want to mod the game into being more high-slash-gonzo fantasy, or being more old school. While a lot of governmental concepts in the world building section are only given a few paragraphs and could easily be looked in a simple wiki search, their inclusion here does provide a decent foundation for newer GMs and those unused to building their own world, especially since writing concepts like these concisively is not as easy as it may sound. Beasts and Bastards, the game's bestiary, contains numerous write-ups for the various types of adversaries as well as a monster creation system. The creation system is a bit crunchier than character creation but uses a broad set of roles which it treats as pseudo-classes. As a result, even though the monsters in this chapter have set levels, they can easily be adjusted with a little bit of reworking. 22 creatures are presented in this section, though each has 3-4 to four variable types, each with its own stat block. Having all the blocks compressed like this can make them blend at times, but they are well organized and present their information clearly. The final section, Appendices and Stuff, is essentially the Odds and Ends segment. Names of towns, streets, strongholds, villains, wilderness, wards, and taverns are all presented here. The concept of random character names is nothing new, but it fits with the aforementioned names as well as everything in the world building section. The game also provides book and electronic references, finishing out with a let's review of reference tables and the character sheet itself. In summary, pros. The most immediate thing to note is the fact that this game is fully free in its complete form, save for the print version which is available for $16 on Lulu. The game has a clear layout and doesn't use any unnecessary amount of purple pros. Additionally, the game can be downloaded in a more printer-friendly version. HAD's minimalism adds to the rules-light nature of the game with its clear writing and use of the rule boxes throughout. As a final note, Justin Halliday clearly wrote this game as an expression of an idea that he wanted to do. His website amounts to his gaming blog, and one can get a strong sense of game knowledge, particularly in the interactions of systems and subsystems, an awareness of what went through his head in designing the mechanics. As a bonus, one gets to see a well-rounded look into the various editions of D&D and its contemporaries. Cons. While I find the term fantasy heartbreaker to be overused, I understand why it might prop up with this game. Generic slash setting-free fantasy is a very overcrowded market, both in general and in the more specific old-school substrata, and thus one needs to do a lot to stand out. HAD does the basics well, but it's very difficult to tell that from an outside glance. 
In other words, I think the game may have been better served by having a specific setting to gain a stronger identity or some form of world building mechanics. Additionally, I am not sure if a few example characters and a sample adventure available on the website for the game is enough in the way of support for it something a lot of gamers want for their system. In terms of layout, I think the game spreads a bit too much where the chapter structure could have been compressed. Bearing in mind that all scores are relative to their genre and subgenre, the final score for Heroes Against Darkness is an 8 out of 10. While the game might stick too close to the tenets of generic fantasy, this is a game that I believe needs to be tried a few times based on its merits. Its mechanics are simple but intuitive, possessing of a strong grasp of design, and melds elements from D&D's various incarnations in a way that meshes well. Additionally, the rules-light nature of the game makes it perfect for convention-style players and newcomers alike. It may not be enough to drop whatever style of fantasy gaming you're using at the moment, but it's perfect for one-off and beer-and-pretzel-style games.